diction is nothing but where the words are chosen the least important things in our lives can bring can get can give us lot of importance or lot of ideas to our lives children will always have more imaginative power हेलो हाय नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू विद्याश्रम फर्स्ट ग्रेड कॉलेज द टेंपल ऑफ एक्सलेंस आई एम नंद किशोर फैकल्टी ऑफ इंग्लिश इन विद्याश्रम माइसोरो इन माय प्रीवियस सेशन आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द पोम शल आई कंपेयर दी रिटन बाय विलियम शेक्सपियर व्हिच इज प्रिस्क्राइब्ड फॉर द फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर बी एंड बी सी यूनिवर्सिटी and in today's session i am going to discuss about the third poem which is sparkles from the wheel written by walt whitman an american poet so let us start with today's session let us know something about the poet and the poem walt whitman is an american poet he was born on may 31st 1819 in west hills long island where it is in new york and his major work was leaves of grass this is one of the major collective poems and this gave a lot of readership to walt whitman this is a bit complicated poetry collection and people believe that this work gained him a lot of fame walt whitman he published this work out of his own money walt whitman used diction syntax and figurative languages in his works diction is nothing but where the words are chosen like the simple words or the simple language uh, where the words are chosen in a in a spoken way syntax is the words where uh, the words or it could be phrases to make a meaningful sentence syntax is carefully choosing the words or phrases to make meaningful sentences and figurative language is the language where the words or the phrases or the language which will help create the image for example it could be the simple words not complicated rather it is the simple word or straightforward word or the real words instead of infatuation or imagination or fiction the words which are used in our daily lives figurative language to create an image in the reader's mind simple words and one of the critics even ezra pound is considered as one of the critics major critics from america and he called walt whitman as america's poet he says america's poet and he is american that's how powerful walt whitman was Ezra Pound says he is America's poet and he is America. Look at the powerful comparison from Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound says if you haven't read Walt Whitman then you haven't known America. If you want to know America you should read Walt Whitman. That's how powerful Walt Whitman was and that's how strong Walt Whitman was. to pictureize america in his writings now let us move on and see couple of pictures here so this is just a picture taken from internet just a reference picture because we are talking about the poem a poem written by walt whitman sparkles from the wheel here what is the poem all about the poem is all about where a knife sharpener is sharpening the knife a knife sharpener this poem is all about how well walt whitman 
looks at the knife sharpener and the way he does it, the act of sharpening the knife is picturized and he wants to convey the same to the readers. He goes on observing each and everything, keenly observing, very closely observing. And you might be wondering, what is so special about a knife sharpener? Sir, you think that this poem is so important? It is a silly thing. Walt Whitman Heltane, and, and he writes in his poem, Avana Padidali Baritane, Obba knife, Shani Madolo, right? In a local language, we call Shani Idiono. Katri Atwa, Chaku Anna Shani Idiono. I want to act, I want to shine in your time. 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 Why is it so important? Why is it so important? Sir, it's so important. Why is it so important? Why is it so important? Why is it so important? On the other Muslim, Martha, maybe on the one that Tipatsali Madavodu, Chaku on the Shark Madi Kortanaste, on the Skidigal Borata Mudoito. Yen is so special about it. Ade Irwantadu, that is the speciality here. Walt Whitman has composed the least minimum important thing in his life or in our lives. He is just conveying the readers the least important things in our lives can bring, can get, can give us lot of importance or lot of ideas to our lives. That is how powerful Walt Whitman was. And the sharp knife, how well he does it, the sharpening of knife, the sharpener, the knife sharpener. And the sparks which comes out while sharpening the knife, what does he compare to? Hegel la compare Martane, Kirigal Varte, Kirigal and Yaujike compare Martane. Walt Whitman, one the least to think Nima Jeevan of the Lee, eh, Nadibodu, Ah, one the Jeevan of the Lee, Nadibon to her least to think on the Kuda, Nibu, inund the angle Lee Nordbodu. Ah, Nordu Vantaha, one do Drustikona on the Belescoli Nibu. He says, develop that angle of looking at things from different perspective. Look at it in different angle. You may see things, ordinary things in an extraordinary way. He says that Nivu Samanya Vada Vandu Vandu Vastu Irbodu Vandu Gatana Irbodu Nimma Jeevanadali Nadi Vantana Nivu Nordaga Adu extraordinary Nima Mele Paranama Bilata. You can look at things in a different way. Let us assume when you were a kid, or when I was a kid, including me, when we all were kids, we used to look at the sky. And we used to look at clouds, right? And the clouds would seem very different to us. We would imagine the shape of a god or any tur turtle, or it could be elephant, it could be giraffe, it could be n number of things there. You as the viewer, now, we have to look at the sky, the sky, the sky, the sky, the sky, the shape of the sky. The shape of the sky, we have to look at the image of the mind. Even now, just because we are grown up, now we have to look at the sky, and we have to look at the image of the sky. Even now, we can think, even now, we can see, even now, we can see, even now, we can imagine. Simple, I guess. What is so special? Why is this too full? Eager, I guess, I guess. Yes, that's how it is. Nimba Jivana Dali alone could have full in my alloys nearly, Mulugo Gidaga, Tumba Kulan Kushwagin, you know, and the Vastu and the Nordic, I was so in you know, on the idea of Barbodu, you know, on the Spurti Kan Bodu, you know, on the Manasi Ulasa Bodu. Isn't it? When we are lost in our thoughts, when we are lost in our pressure, when we are lost in our lives, daily lives, we look at simple things. We learn something. We get something out of it. Just like the way we used to look at sky, the cloud, and imagine the shapes. Isn't it? And 
Walt Whitman is such a person. During his busy life, he looks at things, ordinary things, in an extraordinary way. So that is all this poem about. How well does he picturize his images to the readers? Let us see in the poem now. This is the actual poem and there is no rhyme scheme. There is no particular stanzaic form here. Free verse. What is free verse? There is no stipulated. There is no strong rule to write or compose a poem. If you observe, this is not in the stanzaic form. There are no stanzas there. If you look at the literal poem, it is not divided in stanzas. Free verse, you just go on writing what comes to your mind. Not rubbish, but imagine there is no style. One line is long, one line is small. There is no bifurcation of stanzas. It is free verse. Why he has written that way? Maybe he wanted to talk freely and he is one of the realist. What is this realist? Where he would see things and write as it looked. He would not imagine anything extraordinary. He would not think about fiction. He would not think about supernatural power of things there. He just looks at things and he writes as it is. Maybe he would look at things in his eyes, in his angle, and he might have thought of something. I'm not saying that if the sparkles are compared to something, that doesn't mean that he's not the realist. No, he is the realist, but it is just that he is comparing things to something else. It is not supernatural, but imagination, imaginative power. That is his power. That is his imagination. So let us start with poem. Where the city is ceaseless crowd, where the city is ceaseless. He talks about the city's ceaseless crowd, ceaseless, non-stop. Or not without pause, right? No pause at all. He says crowd. What is the meaning of crowd here? People. On Hilton, Illiruvantaha Nagarada Janaru. No rest. Pause illa. Sumne suttar tar tar. Heavy, busy rush. Heavily crowded. Moves on the live long day. He says, moves on the live long day, which means live long day could also be interpreted as if. The busy day, the scheduled day where everyone is lost in their duty. Everyone is lost in their thoughts. Everyone is lost in their jobs. Busy and simple busy day maybe. Okay, he's talking about it. On the live long day, withdrawn, he says withdrawn, I join. He says, even I, and you should remember that Walt Whitman has worked as a teacher, he has worked as a journalist, he has worked as a government clerk as well. He was a teacher, right, he was a journalist, and he was a government clerk as well. He has touched upon few professions in his life. He says, Maybe he could have been working as a government clerk when he wrote this poem or could have been a teacher or a journalist. But he says that I, even I, withdrawn, which is indicating about the previous line. He says, I, even I, I was very busy with my life, but somehow I found time. He says, I withdrawn, I join a group of children. He says group of children, beautiful comparison. He is not saying anybody there why he has brought in the image of children here. Remember one thing, one danna nenpolitkoli, nevu one padya vanna 
ದಿನವಿಡಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಚೂಸ್ ಅ ಪೋಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಡೇ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ದ ಪೋಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ದ ಪಂಕ್ಚುಯೇಷನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಕುಡ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಎನಿ ಪಂಕ್ಚುಯೇಷನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಈವನ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೋಮ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ವೈ ಈಸ್ ಇ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ವೈಲ್ children will always have more imaginative power why i say this you give this pen to a child or show this pen to a child and ask what is this it is a plaything for a child it could be an elephant for a child it could be a plane for a child it could be a car or it could be anything imaginative power they look at things what we can't look what we can't dream what we can't imagine that is why one of the prominent leaders of world he says if you want to learn something new be like a child or spend most of your time with a child if you want to look at things in a different angle and if you want to learn experience if you want to gain an experience in your life go and spend time with the old people wisely told that is why he refers that joining to the group or maybe joining the group of children even he wants to or let us say this is one perspective or just walt whitman he wanted to be a child himself he wanted to leave behind all his pre- pressure all his pain all his thoughts about the days life and then he just wanted to be like a child free from all the bondage he wanted to free his shackles you need to have a child mind if you want to see thing in a different angle children watching they are watching what i pause i stopped maybe even he was busy i pause he is referring to ceaseless where there is no stop at all first word itself the city is ceaseless crowd even he is one among the crowd there so i pause i stop myself aside with them aside look at the words he has used aside in the sense he wants to differentiate from the group of people or the crowd and he wants to join the other party you have to interpret i'm telling you from the examination point of view each and every line from the poem is very important each and every word from the poem is very important you can go on writing two or three lines on these aspects on this concepts on this words and i'm telling you for all the viewers for all my viewers this poem is taught from the point of view of mysuru university ba and bca so i am emphasizing more on my students writing skills let us continue he says he wants to bifurcate i want to stay aside with them with the children and then he proceeds by the curb toward the edge of the flagging by the curb curb is like you know uh, to keep an eye on to watch but here the curb could also mean a stone a sort of a stone by the curb maybe towards the footpath right the pedestrian path pedestrian way toward the edge of the flagging edge is like the edge right of the flagging is flagging is the flag the pole the pole the concrete structure where you see flagging also means tired exhausted you can interpret things in different way let me tell you it is left to the reader's perception edge of the flagging in the sense edge is an end edge end end of my tiredness you can see things in a different way maybe he is just picturizing 
about the knife sharpna or the group of people standing where they are standing at the edge of flagging or maybe at the curb by the curb or it could also mean that the day's end the end of the day and i am too exhausted at the edge you are almost dying out of tiredness that is for the day i'm i'm, I'm telling you at the edge at that point of time that is sort of a feeling the point where you feel that you are no longer going to be alive you are so exhausted for the day you have run out of your energy and i don't want to look at anything that is that you know pinpoint that that sharp edge the feeling at that point of time he says beautiful comparison at that point of time i want to go and join those children the group of people and he gives a beautiful comparison and then continues a knife grinder works at his wheel sharpening a great knife a knife grinder a knife sharpener what is so important here what is so special sir come on we have seen knife sharpener don't be so silly while while you express while you explain how could you be so silly i am not but what whitman is saying a knife grinder works at his wheel his wheel here wheel is also very important just imagine what is a wheel wheel is a wheel which has a sparks which is in round shape what is so special but look at things in different angle works at his wheel sharpening a great knife each and every word is very important here a knife grinder could be compared to a god here you can compare you can see him as a god spirituality e obba knife grinder yaro obba shani hidithane avananna neevu devanage athwa devarige compare maadabodu ayyo hege sir adu how is it possible i will tell you works at his wheel tanna aayuda this is is instrument the weapon for whom if you compare to him to the god if you compare the knife grinder to the god then the wheel is the weapon in the hands of god if i tell okay just bringing in the reference one reference of shiva shiva right shivanige one reference ke compare madidre trishula irutte avana kaiyalli damuruga ella irutte trishula irutte it is a weapon for him likewise the weapon to the knife grinder is the wheel and wheel is also the life cycle life cycle where it starts and it comes up jeevana chakra kala chakra we tell in kannada kala chakra namma jeevana kelage hod mele mele barle beku mele hod mele kelage barle beku life cycle or it is life circle as well where it completes a rotation if you just go on with the next word sharpening why i am referring this knife grinder to the god because imagine every human being is born with fear of god we fear god or let us say we fear something and the concept is seen as god we can see god in n number of things so whichever things you see the god works at his wheel wheel is as i told you instrument the weapon sharpening god is going to sharpen your mind sharpen your life namma jeevana mondavagirutte naavu ondu katya hage what wetman maybe that is what he wanted to tell 
ಆರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೆಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೇ ಅವನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನ ಕತ್ತಿ ಇದ್ದಂತೆ ನಾವು ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದಷ್ಟು ನಾವು ಮೊಂಡ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತೀವಿ ಯಾವಾಗ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ದಣಿಸ್ತೀವೋ ನಾವು ಮತ್ತೆ ಶಾರ್ಪ್ ಆಗ್ತೀವಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಸ್ ದ ಬೆಟರ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ನೈಫ್ ಡಿ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ that just because you read this poem today understand this poem today that you are going to retain or recall this poem for a longer time you can't you have to watch it again and again you have to work on the poem over and over only then your mind starts gaining more knowledge i'm not just saying about this poem i'm telling i'm expressing about anything for that matter ಯಾವುದೇ ವಿಚಾರ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಇರಬೇಕು ಕಲಿತಾ ಇರಬೇಕು ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಕಲಿದೇನೆ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಕೂತ್ರೆ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನ ಹಾಳಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೋಂಬೇರಿತನ ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತೀವಿ ಆಲಸ್ಯತನ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ವಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸೋ ಲೇಜಿ ಲೇಜಿನೆಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ನೈಫ್ ಲೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಶಾರ್ಪ್ನೆಸ್ ಈವನ್ ವಿ ಲೂಸ್ ದ ಟಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಾರ್ಪ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಶಾರ್ಪ್ನೆಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಶಾರ್ಪ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ he says sharpening a great knife not an ordinary knife not the knife which is rust which has the rust in its body now he says great knife why is he comparing the knife that it is great that is the reason we have to talk about god the life cycle the circle or the sharpening the process of where we do our things in our daily lives how well we do it great knife is we it could be us we are great he wanted to call each and everything great or maybe walt whitman's power of looking at things is such that he looks at things in a great way or everything he looks at is very great to him the greatest things knife what a beautiful com- comparison he says the knife which will cut not to harm but which will be helpful in life so you god has done and one more thing how to interpret this this line it is very important now god has helped you all to sharpen your life god has given you things god is giving you things which you want in your lives but you being the knife how well do you do it you can stab others and become bad you can be in the hands of a cook a chef who will use you well enough without knife his life is nothing he cannot cut he cannot chop veggies it is just a ordinary it is just an ordinary comparison but still i'm telling you you can be both good and bad after you gain after you receive what you wanted in your life from the god beautifully told and next he moves on he tells bending over he carefully holds it if you observe right neevu kulankushavagi observe madidre shani idiyonu thumba bendagi correct agi chaaku idkondu right full mele kelage hinde munde ella shani ididane he sharpens his blade or the knife very carefully bends over he carefully holds if you compare if you imagine that the sharpener or the knife sharpener or the knife grinder to the god he carefully holds he is not just like carelessly just go on peddling and like no not carelessly not like without interest very keenly he is very keenly observing okay the edge okay this has to be even sharper he observes 
keen observation, the keen observer holds it to the stone. The stone, remember, it is the raw material available, but it will be brought into a certain shape. And then, by foot and knee, with measured tread, measured tread, like where is going to press work on foot, he is going to work. There are two types of knife sharpness, right? These days you get to see n number of instruments, electronic gadgets, I know. But during those days, like even they have to pedal, right? With just like the bicycle or they would have a sort of, which is attached, right? To this wheel. And once he presses here, applying his foot, he presses and that would circle it. So he says, with measured tread, there is a measure, it's just like, not like go on pedaling it or not go on putting a pressure on the pedal, just like a mad dog there. No, there is measure, he knew, he knows how much pressure he has to give and what is the cycle, okay? He turns rapidly, rapidly what? The knife. The knife is there, right? And uh, for that matter, he just sharpens it, right? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Ulta sida, ulta sida, aunu, shani di taidane. What happens? It will become sharp. As he presses with light but firm hand. Observe, as he presses, presses what? The knife. There is a stone, yes. He presses, he presses. Not too much, too much pressure. That is the reason I am comparing him to God. God knows how exactly, what is the amount of pressure he has to put on you. And you can also imagine Whitman meant or you can imagine, you can assume or presume or look at in a different angle. If you are in pressure in your life, that means God is giving you a lot of pressure. That means you have to become sharp, work harder, be smart. Become sharp in your life. The elders would say, if you are facing too many problems, pressures in your life, then God is testing you. Maybe God wants you to become the best, not better. He would not be satisfied with you. Because God believes, God knows you. God would know that my child, you know, you, you don't deserve good. Not just good, not just better. I want you to be best because you deserve best. So I'm giving you pressure. Likewise, he's pressing it. If the knife is spoiled, if it is not too sharp, he had to press it too hard. Or if, if the knife is rust, it has rust on its blade, then he had to clean it. It, it is a long process. But ultimately, what is the result? You will become sharp. And he says, with light. Not anything, not dark, with light. Light has two meanings, the literal light and the light is pressed with light, maybe you are already good now and you are going to be better and very soon you are the best. So with light but firm hand, not like tsh, tsh, tsh. no, he knows it very firm, his hand is firm. And is not going to miss out, is not going to harm his hand. Perfection. He is talking about perfection here. Fourth issue, then in copious golden jets. He says, fourth issue. Issue, it could be a problem here. Fourth 
is forward. What is the issue then? In copious golden jets, enough, plenty. Plenty golden jets. He compares the sparkles to golden jets. Because the moment the metal touches the stone, there is a spark. Sparkle. And he says, next, forward issue. What is the forward issue? He goes on grinding it. The knife sharpener. Right? And there is a lot of sparkles coming out. Which are compared to golden jets. Gold. Precious metal. He says, the results, the golden jets... Is he literally talking about gold here? He is not. It is the sparkle. And this is the result. Golden jets is the outcome, ultimate outcome. After taking so much of pressure from the God, we would shine. Shine bright like a diamond. Right? We shine actually. That is the result. And then he says, sparkles from the wheel. Golden jets, sparkles from the wheel. It is going to look like as if the result, the outcome is gold. Wonderful sparkles from the wheel. Not from the knife, not out of knife. It is from the wheel, neither from the stone, which is very important here. You should observe one thing. It is not even the stone, not even the knife. Actually, it is from the stone, between the stone and the knife. But why is he saying sparkles from the wheel? The cycle. I told the cycle there. Which will give emphasize, which will give prominence. To ups and downs. Maybe the poet meant that anything that comes out is from the God. The result. Parishrama Nindadu Pratipala Avanadu. Work hard and definitely you will get the result. From whom? From the God. That's what he meant. So look at things. From different angle. You need to look at things or any, any word here. It could be even the smallest minute punctuation mark. It could be a conjunction. It could be an article as well. Even that has got a greater meaning to convey to the reader. So that is it for today's session. We'll meet you in the next session about this poem. Until then, keep reading. Have a good day. Take care.